Up until she was 27 years old, Laura Jean Ackerson lived a pretty tough life. She had come from a broken family, left home at a young age with her brother, and practically raised herself. So by the time she had made it to Kinston, North Carolina, she was already used to things being chaotic and unstable. But nothing was more destabilizing than when Laura told her friends and brother the news that she was suddenly married to a man they'd never met. Everyone in her life was worried, but they went along with it anyway, hoping that she had just found love. Little did she know, the love she thought she had gained was about to make her lose everything. Laura was born on April 30th, 1984 in Hastings, Michigan. Her parents divorced when she was very young, which resulted in her moving many times as she grew up. She bounced around from Michigan to Idaho, through the Midwest, and eventually to North Carolina, where Laura and her brother lived separately from their family. The town she ended up settling in was called Kinston, a community of 20,000 people on the outskirts of Raleigh. She worked in bars while making her way into graphic design. By the time she was 27, Laura had just started two design businesses with her partner Siobhan Mathis. Just as things were starting to look up for Laura in the work department, they also started to heat up in her personal life. One night, a musician named Grant Hayes walked in to perform at a bar Laura worked at part-time, and he clearly hit the right notes. The two immediately hit it off. Their romance started moving quickly, and Laura clearly became attached. But for some odd reason, she didn't tell anyone in her life about Grant. That is, until she couldn't hide it anymore. One day, after her friend Heidi had just returned from a trip, Laura decided to drop a bomb of a confession. She told Heidi that while she was away, she had gone with a man named Grant to a courthouse and was quickly married. This surprised and worried Heidi, as Laura was known to be slightly codependent and emotionally immature, and it seemed like things with Grant were moving too fast. Laura's brother and other friends also shared this thought, but what were they supposed to do about it? The two of them were apparently already married. So Grant and Laura lived for a short while in so-called marital bliss, and it only took a few months for Laura to become pregnant. This very quickly turned out to be a bad thing, because as time went on, everyone came to realize that Grant was a very, very bad guy. Firstly, Grant was weird, awkward, and always seemed a little off, no matter who he was talking to. So this is really great to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, Grant Hayes, singer songwriter, musician, and artist. Yes. But his problems went deeper than that. Grant was also very controlling of Laura and would constantly discourage her from seeing her friends and family. If they called her, he would tell Laura that whoever she was talking to was a bad influence on her. He would then go on to insult them intensely, usually while the person was still on the phone. He would also get quite angry if she ever tried to see anyone in person, and it got to the point that Laura had to sneak around to visit her own loved ones. Things got worse when their first son, Little Grant, was born. Laura wanted to get her son vaccinated, but adult Grant was worried that vaccinations would make his son autistic. Laura and her family obviously didn't think too highly of this response, though this was about to be the least of their problems. Not long after their first son was born, Grant began doing quite a lot of illicit sub at times going for a week without seeing his family. He would claim that he was out pursuing business leads and gathering music contacts, but Laura knew the truth. Grant was starting to go off the deep end. That's when the crazy conspiracy theories started popping up. For one, Grant thought he was the chosen one and often told Laura about how he was a time traveler from the future. He also believed that aliens were following him, controlling the government, and telling him about a spaceship that would take him away. Grant started pursuing wild business ideas in order to gather the wealth and influence necessary to get on this imaginary spaceship which brought him all over the place in pursuit of new leads. He would also cheat on Laura constantly as he traveled, then openly talk to her about his infidelities. He told her because he viewed them not as misdeeds, but as necessary steps to influencing people and getting where he wanted to go. Laura almost left Grant in this madness, but the birth of their second son, Gentle, made leaving seem too difficult. But then, Grant suddenly moved to New York. Claiming that he was going to pursue one of his leads, Grant completely abandoned Laura in North Carolina with both of their sons. He had no plans on coming back, and he was rubbing Laura's face in an extramarital romance he was having with a woman named Amanda on Facebook. At least, it seemed extramarital at first, until Grant posted pictures of his and Amanda's wedding. Confused, horrified, and angry, Laura called Grant to figure out how he could possibly marry another woman while the two of them are still husband and wife. When Grant's response was that he never actually signed their marriage certificate, Laura realized that the father of her two sons was a horrible person. 
She entered a long and grueling custody battle with Grant and his new wife, Amanda, which involved tons of mean and exaggerated accusations against her character. Grant even tried to have her court order to be psychologically evaluated. But when the dust settled and the battle was over, both parents had to share their sons equally, splitting days in the week. To Grant, in his convoluted and aggressive mindset, this was an absolute injustice. So he and Amanda decided to take things into their own hands. That's when they did something truly horrible. On Wednesday, July 13th, Laura received an invite to go pick up the kids from Grant's apartment and take them to Monkey Joe's, a routine she was familiar with. The only difference was that this time, he invited her to his apartment first. Normally, Laura wouldn't have gone anywhere private with Grant, given his mental state, but she had business near him in Raleigh that day and she was excited to see her boys. So that morning, she called her business partner Siobhan, took several sales meetings, then called Grant at 4.59 to let him know she was on her way. But that was the last time anyone heard from Laura. As she drove to meet up with Grant, she vanished. Laura Jean Ackerson is from Kinston, but was last seen here a week ago. Her car turned up at an apartment complex in North Raleigh early Wednesday morning. David, people I talked to say Laura Jean Ackerson would never leave her two sons. They also say she had lost touch with a lot of family members and friends in recent years, partially because of her relationship with the father of her boys, a relationship that in recent months had turned volatile, they say. Police immediately turned to Grant. They asked him what happened to Laura that Wednesday night, and he said she took the kids to Monkey Joe's as planned. He even said that they were also planning on exchanging the kids the following Friday, and security camera footage shows Grant showing up with the kids at that time. This may have been reassuring evidence, but something still seemed fishy to the authorities. So they asked him to come in and give his statement in person, a request they were never going to see fulfilled. More than a week passed of police asking Grant to come in and speak with them, and they were starting to feel a bit sketched out. So they tracked Grant's phone and found out that he was not in North Carolina at all, but Richmond, Texas. This was clearly suspicious, but it was also illegal, as Grant was court ordered not to leave the state with his children. So detectives were sent to both Texas and Grant's North Carolina apartment to find out what was really going on. What they found was nothing short of horrifying. In Grant's apartment, they found a giant bleach stain on the floor, a horrible bleach smell, tons of signs of missing furniture, a bathroom stripped of absolutely everything, and red stained mattress and sheets, and a note with two different sets of handwriting on it that read, I, Laura J. Jay Ackerson, for the sum of 25000 agree not to pursue custody of the two minor children, Grant and Gentle Hayes. I am not surrendering parental rights, but I do consent to leaving them in the full custody of their father now. All in all, it looked very much like the scene of a crime designed to free Grant from his custody woes, but that was only the half of it. Down in Texas, detectives found an even more horrifying sight. After talking with Amanda's family, who Grant and Amanda were claiming to visit, police learned about a creek site where the couple had randomly visited earlier that week. When they arrived, they saw something they will never forget. They found human pieces and left to be eaten by the alligators in the area. Luckily, the police got there before the gators and used dental records that they were able to identify the as none other than Laura Ackerson. It's believed that the actual occurred in North Carolina, where the uh, suspects placed it in an ice chest, acquired a U-Haul trailer, put the ice chest in the trailer and transported her through several states to Fort Bend County, where they tossed her into Oyster Creek. According to forensic evidence, Grant and Amanda had tried to Laura's then left to the alligators. Unfortunately for them, they didn't finish the job. Grant and Amanda were swiftly arrested, and they quickly turned on each other during the interrogation. Amanda claimed she was afraid for her life and just helped Grant cover up the crime so that he wouldn't hurt her. And Grant claimed that Amanda slayed Laura in anger and he was just cleaning up. In both cases, these stories fell on deaf ears, and they were both found guilty. Amanda is currently serving 35 years, and Grant is serving a life sentence with no chance of parole. So while this story may not be mysterious, it's definitely a horrifying example of someone who's willing to do even the darkest things to get what they want. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and if you have a dark crime tale you want to see, leave us a suggestion in the comments.